G R U N D I S L E V Gurusa. So you'd like to hear about how I got into this mess? How a regular guy ended up half a world away, unconscious in the backseat of a car belonging to a guy he thought he could trust but turned out to be his worst enemy? But maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. I should start from the very beginning. It's the best place, after all. My name is Ben Jordan. I was just your average college graduate, 22 years old, with no direction in life and a degree that got me nowhere except a sales job with a local bullseye. As a kid, I was in love with monster movies and anything to do with the paranormal. My family thought it was just a waste of time, except for my grandfather. Grandpa Arthur used to tell me ghost stories and legends he had heard while traveling through Europe in the 1920s. This really fueled my interest in the paranormal. By the time I finished high school, I was obsessed. I wanted to travel and see if the legends were true, but I had to put my dreams aside and go to college to appease my parents. I ended up studying international relations which bored me to tears. So I passed the time by reading my books on the paranormal, listening to Pink Floyd, and dreaming of my ideal career. One day I was browsing the web and found a book called The Paranormal Investigator's Handbook by Professor Quincy Sanborn. I ordered it immediately and read it cover to cover the day it arrived. It was then that I decided I was going to become a paranormal investigator. So after graduating, I asked my parents to loan me some money, advertised my services on the internet, and sat back waiting for the cases to come rolling in. Of course, at the time, I had no way of knowing that the path I'd chosen was going to change my life, in more ways than one. My first case started off with me receiving a phone call, but not one I was very happy about. No, Mom, I, I told you. I've decided to become a freelance paranormal investigator. I know you think it sounds crazy, but just trust me on this one. I think I've seen enough episodes of The X-Files to know that there's something out there. Look, I have to go. I'll call you back in a few days. <sighs> I don't understand. It's been three weeks since I posted about my services on those forums. You'd think someone would have called by now. Uh, hello? Yes, this is Ben Jordan. Uh, sir, please calm down. I, I can't understand what you're saying. A skunk ape murdering people in the Florida Everglades? Okay, I'll go there as soon as I can. What did you say your name was? Ranger Morales. Okay, I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Well, that sure was weird, but I've got a case. Time to buy a ticket to Florida. Hello, I'm Ben Jordan. Are you Ranger Morales? I'm afraid not, young man. I'm glad you've arrived, though. What's the matter? Did something happen to him? Come with me, and I'll show you. Well, here he is. We found him here about an hour ago. My god, what did this to him? It seems that this was the work of a creature that up until now was just a legend. A monster known as the Skunk Ape. I guess I'd better start my investigation then. The mutilated body of the ranger is stretched out on the dirt. Feeling slightly nauseated, you examine the body more closely. You'd really rather not handle another man's organs. You can talk at the ranger all you like, he isn't going to respond. There is nothing to be learned from asking the ranger questions. 
The ranger's midsection has been torn open by whatever attacked him. Several of his internal organs are visible. However, you notice that his liver seems to be missing. Keep your fingers out of the ranger's face. Just because he's dead, that's no excuse for you to be rude to him. Are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. Just a little jumpy is all. Excuse me. Yes? What can you tell me about the murders? Oh my, they're horrible. Ranger Morales is the fifth person we've found in the past two weeks. Before that, we lost another ranger. A young woman named Rita Myers. There was also a vacationing couple who were camping out in the woods, and the first person we found was a teenage boy who had gone out hiking. All the bodies have had one thing in common. They're all missing their livers. Missing the livers? Yes. Our best guess is that the skunk ape eats the livers. Yikes. When the whole problem started, we found a few deer here and there with their livers torn out, but then we started finding people, and the M.O. just carried over. What do you know about the skunk ape? I don't know any specific facts. The skunk ape was always more of an urban legend. But I have heard a few things. What exactly would you like to know? What is a skunk ape exactly? It's similar to a yeti or a sasquatch, but we call it a skunk ape because its trademark is a horrible smell. Some have described it as being a mix of rotten eggs, moldy cheese, and dung. That sounds... unpleasant. It is. But the good thing is that that characteristic will make it somewhat easier to track down. I guess. Has anyone actually seen the skunk ape? The only ones who have are dead. So there aren't any survivors or anything I could talk to? I'm afraid not. So if you haven't seen it, do you know what it looks like? Not for certain, but the rumors of its appearance are all the same. It's supposed to be seven feet tall, weigh about 300 pounds, and have a nasty temper. Glad I asked. Are there any other animals in the park that might be capable of attacking people like this? Not really. The Florida panther might be capable of it, but there are so few of them left it seems unlikely that they would be to blame. Besides, they usually keep to themselves. Have you found any evidence as to what might be responsible? The only thing we've found so far is a large footprint near one of the murder scenes. I see. That's all for now. Okay. This is a nice park you've got here. Thanks. We rangers pride ourselves on keeping this state preserve as pristine and beautiful as we can. It's really a shame that our nation's wetlands are constantly disappearing. Yes, I agree. Can you tell me how to get around the area? Of course. This area isn't really that big. Over there you can see the roof of the visitor's center. Near that is a ranger station, and of course there's the forest too. Here, take this brochure. It's got a map so you can find your way. Thanks. So, now that I know more or less what I'm dealing with, what do you suggest I do? Well, that's a good question. Obviously, we need to find out why the skunk ape has decided to start killing people, and stop it from doing so again. As a park ranger, I'm morally opposed to killing it, but as it has already taken more than one human life, that may unfortunately be the only solution. I think your best bet is to go out into the forest and see if you can find out if the skunk ape has a lair or some place it stays regularly. Of course, you shouldn't go alone, but most of the other rangers have been too scared to go out into the woods since the killing started. I'd go with you myself, but I don't think I'm up for much excitement anymore. You said most of the rangers were too scared to go into the woods. Are there any who aren't? Well, there is one guy, Ranger Rick. But I don't know if he'll want to go. Tell me about Ranger Rick. 
He hasn't been working here very long, but he's one of our best rangers. The thing about him...